Today, I'm going to show you how to set up a system where you can be notified ahead of time uh, for important dates, but also that we can customize even by the days of the week. For example, if it's an event that's on a Monday, you always want to know on a Friday before, but if it's on a Tuesday, you just want to know the Monday before, something like that. I live in the borough of Queens in New York City, and it is notoriously hard to get a parking spot here. But we also have really interesting rules around street sweeping, so twice a week, between the hours of on my street 8 a.m and 10 30 a.m the street sweeper might come through and so you need to clear the side of the street and so i'm constantly playing the game of trying to park in places that are not about to have street sweeping so that i don't have to sit in my car or move my car during that period of the day however there are certain days where the street sweeper is on holiday and no one has to move their cars and frequently i have been in the situation where I moved my car anyway because I was in the habit of doing it and I didn't need to. So this system that we're building today is a really selfish one. This is one I set up for me so that I can know in advance when there's gonna be a street sweeping holiday. But I did create it with other New Yorkers in mind and maybe others in similar situations in other places as well. We're gonna set it up so that it's really easy to set those rules and then just let it run. The notification is gonna be through an email, so you will get an email on the day you've specified to letting you know about this event that's gonna happen. Without any more explanation, let's just jump in and build this thing. A quick note that you can download the template for this Airtable base in the video description below, and that link will also take you to my online community where you can discuss the template and ask questions and hear back from me. So check that out in the video description. So hopping into the base here, I have downloaded all of the dates for New York City alternate side parking holidays. And so you can see here, this is the holiday in the primary field here, the official message. So this is the actual kind of text that they've written out that just basically says that it's suspended for that day, the parking meters are still in effect. And then we've got the actual date that this holiday is happening. And because we're gonna create an automation for this that's sending an email, I wanna set up some information so that's gonna make our email text better. Rather than just sending it like this date in the email, um, I wanna be able to say like the weekday and just format the date in, in a nicer way. So let's create a new field called parking date weekday. This is going to be a formula field and we'll make, use a date time format function. So the date time format function takes a date time and then formats it in the format that we want. In this case, we wanna know what the weekday is. So I'm gonna say date time format parking date comma, and then the format string, which is gonna be DD. That's for a fully written out weekday. I'll go ahead and create that field. And this is great. Now we know what the weekday is. And the next thing I want to do is say the month and the day so that we can say like Monday, December 25th. So we're going to create another field called parking date, month and day. That's going to be a formula. Same thing. We'll use a date time format function. Take the parking date. Then we'll format this one as long month day. Close it off, create field. Great. Next, we're gonna add our notified date. So this is the date that we're gonna be actually receive the email, letting us know that in the future at some point, this holiday is something that we need to keep an eye out for. So I actually pre-wrote this formula. Let's call this field notified date. Make it a formula field and I'm going to paste this in and then describe it to you. Let's open this up here. All right. So remember that you can just copy this template at the end. And so you don't have to actually write this formula yourself. If you want to just copy it from my template, it's easy to do that, but I'm still going to explain to you how it works. So we are using an if statement, a couple switch statements and a date add function. So this formula basically does two main things. The first part is we're going to tell it that which weekdays we even care about. So for me on my street, I watch Monday, Thursday and Tuesday, Friday spots because one side is Monday, Thursday, one side is Tuesday, Friday. Other streets might just have Wednesday or there might be Wednesday, Friday, 
et cetera. And depending on where you are in the city, you may just not care about a holiday that's on a certain day. For me, I don't care about Wednesdays. I never have to worry about moving my car on Wednesdays anyway. So if there's a street sweeping holiday on that day, it doesn't matter to me. And so I've got this switch statement here that looks at the, the date time format of the parking date, which will format it as the day of the week, which means that we can then compare it against Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and output a result based on that. For me, like I said, I don't care about Wednesdays. I also don't care about the weekends. I just care about Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. So I've put the yeses and nos based on that. If you did care about Sunday, you would just switch that no to a yes, and then you'd receive notifications for Sundays. So I'm going to switch that back to a no. And so, you know, out of all this, if the result of this switch statement is a no, then this that's outputting to the if statement that's wrapping this, that this is the value of it matches no, it's going to return blank, meaning there's no date being output in this formula because the date in this formula field is what's going to trigger our automation, our email automation, right? So if we get a no, it's blank. The rest of this thing doesn't matter. If it's a yes, though, then we are going to be using this logic. And what this logic is saying is this is the number of days ahead of the actual parking date that we want to be receiving that notification. And again, I'm customizing this by the day of the week because for me, I need to know on the previous day that I might be moving my car. So if it's a Monday, the next time I might move my car is Tuesday, right? It's a day after. But if it's a Friday, the next time I might move my car is a Monday. And I can, again, go through here and Saturday, Sunday, Wednesday don't matter. I put zero, but it, this is never going to be in play because we're already going to get a blank for those days. But on Mondays, if the parking day is on a Monday, I want to know three days before I want to know on Friday. If it's on a Tuesday, I want to know on Monday. So it's one day before. And this little negative is important here because that's what's we've got a date add. So we're taking that parking day, date and adding negative days to it so that we can get a previous date that's going to trigger our email automation. So to review, if you are copying this formula, go through and put a yes for the days on which that you care about getting a notification. So the holiday date that you care about getting the no notification from. And then this part is where we want to know how many days ahead based on the day of the week. All right, so let's create that field. And this works so you can see that we've got these blank days if it's a Sunday, Saturday, Wednesday, but then we've got these dates ahead of time for the days that we want to know ahead of time. This is giving us a time here. I'm actually going to just get rid of that because the time I'm going to deal with in our automation. So now that we've got all of our formulas set up, the last thing we need to do is to create our automation. So let's name our automation parking holiday email. And for the trigger, I'm going to say when record matches conditions. And so we'll go into the parking holidays table and the condition is when the notify date is today. So anytime the notify date matches today, it's going to trigger this for, for that record. Now we can add an action to send an email and you could use the official send email automation or you could use the Gmail one. I usually use the Gmail one because it's nice to send from your own email address. This also has more capability for free plans. Okay, I'm going to pick which email address to send it to. I'm going to say for the subject, oh, this is the two. Okay, it's going to be to info at three rings.co. The subject is parking suspended. And then we'll use our date formulas that we created. So we can say the weekday and the month and day. 
okay, the email is going to say parking suspended Monday, September 2nd, or something, whatever the date is. And then for the message, we can include the official message that the official message from NYC parking that says parking is suspended for this holiday, parking meter is still in effect. All right, and let's test this out. So let's open up the notified date formula. And today is Wednesday. I'm filming this on a Wednesday. So I'm just going to change this Thursday to notify one day in advance. Save, confirm change so that it'll notify me for tomorrow. And then I've already got this one that I created for 427 Thursday. This is a test. Okay, so the notified date is today. And let's just give it a name to test holiday. Great, so let's go back to automations. And for this one, I'm gonna choose a record to test. So I'll take that test holiday. And then in the send email action, let's go ahead and generate a preview. And yep, okay, it's gonna say parking suspended Thursday, April 27th. This is a test. Awesome. One thing I wanna call out real quick is that this notified date here is going to switch to what's considered today on Greenwich Mean Time, meaning that actually rather than happening at midnight, it's gonna happen for me the evening before that. And the way it's set up now, I'm actually gonna be notified the evening before the day that we've listed here. And if you wanted to offset that, you could use a date add formula to, to offset this, add a, a time into it. And if you're interested in learning how to do that, let me know in the comments and I will create a video on time offsets to match your local time. And that is how to set up an automation to game New York City alternate side parking. This was a pretty niche use case. So if you are actually gonna use this and you're in New York City using Airtable, I'd love to hear from you. Send me a message. My email was in this automation or you can look me up on the website. I'll also remind you that you can download a template linked in the video description below, as well as uh, use that same link to visit the community where you can discuss and ask questions. We touched on a couple more advanced topics in this tutorial. One was conditional logic, how to use if statements and switch statements. So if you're interested in learning more about those, check out this video here. And we also talked about time zones and how to set a time zone or set an offset. And so if you're interested in learning more about how to use time zones in Airtable, check out this video here. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.